Hey guys, a warm welcome back to yet another video. Today we'll be discussing the top 10 things to consider when winter camping. I know the comment is going to come, so I might as well just face it head on right away. Uh, I anticipated more snow. It's been minus 10 degrees Celsius the last uh, couple of days. The reality is uh, that there is not that much snow. This is also why I brought this big jacket that will uh, survive in everything. Just to be clear, if I were to stay the night, I would probably uh, be wearing a jacket like this because you can, you don't need to move around. You can just sit comfortably and and stay warm so it's a it's a good jacket you're gonna have the help of ai i'm gonna fleek in with some of my tips as well but none of that really matters because the real knowledge will be in the comment section as it always will be and always has been so uh, make sure to look around everywhere so the first thing the ai is telling us is that first and foremost make sure you you have the right gear goes without saying uh, this includes a warm and waterproof tent a sleeping bag rated for cold temperatures and warm clothing and shoes So yeah, as we can tell, it's not super um, specific in, in what it means, and it's pretty pretty common sense, pretty basic. Obviously, you want to be able to um, adapt to when you're moving and when you're not moving, and you want to be able to layer up and down accordingly. That's the first point, so let's head on over to the second point that AI is telling us is to choose a campsite that is sheltered from the wind and make sure it has access to firewood if you plan on building a fire. Obviously, this is a really smart uh, thing to do as well. If you are not near any form of shelter, let's say you're uh, up in the mountains, uh, we want to bring a shovel uh, so we can partly dig our way down a little bit and, and protect the tent and, and uh, put snow around the tent and also build a, sort of a snow wall from the wind so we can protect it from the different directions that it might be blowing from. We want to just start early by when it's light outside and really make the most of the lights. I would say it's important as well and um, expect things to take a much longer time uh, than they usually do. So plan for that. At the third point, I think it gets a little bit confusing. It's saying, uh, don't forget to pack plenty of food and water and make sure to bring water purification tablets or a filter in case you need to melt snow for drinking water. We both know that uh, filter and tablets won't melt any water around here. So we'd still bring, need to bring a pot where we would be able to boil or melt snow. And if we're boiling the water, that will pretty much clear it out. And uh, as long as we don't bring the yellow snow, I think we should be pretty good. So I just want to add those extra points and then I'm sure the comment section will fill you in on the rest that I missed. Let's move on to point number four. So here we're talking about being prepared for extreme cold by bringing hand and foot warmers, you know, the ones, small ones that you break off and then they heat up. Uh, that's a really good tip. As well as a first aid kit in case of frostbite or other cold related injuries. So we all know the importance of the first aid kit. We've been through that many, many times now in the last couple of videos. So yeah, we're, we can all agree on that one. And then number five, Make sure that your tent is properly ventilated to prevent condensation from building up inside. And this is something that a lot of people tend to forget. They think that it's gonna get warmer if we just close everything up and don't let any of the cold air or the wind inside. Um, and it might get warmer at the, at the beginning, but then once you start to breathe out in, inside of the tent, it's gonna get wet and eventually it's gonna get colder. So you wanna keep uh, the airflow steady going uh, in the roof of the tent or the, the ceiling of the tent so that uh, it will not get wet. That's the most important thing that we want to avoid in any cold situation to, to get wet. So same goes for when we're sleeping in a tent. The things that will keep you warm, so obviously your body, make sure that you use caps and, and the right base layers. Um, and of course, that your, uh, your sleeping, bad, uh, sleeping bag and the layers that you have on your sleeping pads and, and the shelter that you have from the ground. Uh, so those are some of the things that will actually help you to stay warm and use gloves and thick socks for your feet and all and so on um, obviously we talked about before you can boil water in a thicker water bottle and then you can keep that uh, uh, close to your stomach put it in a sock put it close to your stomach and that will work like a radiator uh, throughout the entire night and will keep you warm and toasty and then uh, if you have big jackets like this one you can always put them on top of your uh, your sleeping bag uh, or down by the foot box that will also help you a lot if you feel that you're getting colder in that area there's a few pointers that AI will not tell you about and then comment section will hit you up with the rest. And then point number six is something that we all should do. Uh, doesn't matter what part of the year it is. And that's always let someone know where you're going and when you plan to return in case of an emergency. Anything can happen. So this is what we want to uh, tell our friends and family in case something should go sideways. So uh, people can start looking for us in the right time. Very important. 
Point number seven, AI is telling us it's also a good idea to bring a satellite phone or a two-way radio for communication in case of an emergency. Just make sure that you charge the batteries and everything is good to go. And try that at home, not when you're out in the field. All right, point number eight. If you're camping in an area with heavy snowfall, be prepared to shovel out your tent and campsite regularly to prevent the snow from collapsing your shelter. This is also something that obviously will not happen here today, <laughs> but if you're up in the mountains or farther, further north or you're in an area with a lot of snow, uh, this is something that you have seen. People also do uh, number one and two in the vestibule because they don't want to go out in the wind and get super cold and then go back. So you have to prepare. Obviously, uh, here today we will not be facing anything of those extreme conditions. Number nine, don't forget to bring a shovel. Kind of mentioned that in the number eight. Uh, compass and a map of the area in case you need to dig out your car or find your way back to civilization. So I think the shovel is the main um, difference of a tool that you will bring in the winter time. You can even dig, you know, dig into the snow and get cover from there. There's tons of things you can do with the shovel. Number 10. Finally, be aware of the signs of hypothermia and frostbite and seek medical attention if necessary. That's a pretty good self-explanatory tip as well. And then uh, finally, uh, AI is uh, sending us off with a fun farewell. Winter camping can be fun and re um, a rewarding experience, but it's important to be prepared and take the necessary precautions. We hope this video has been helpful and we'll see you on the next one. So we say thank you to the AI. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool experience just to try it and, and see what it has to say. As you uh, can tell, it's pretty general statements. It's not super specific. Uh, we'll, we'll see if we can find more specific things to ask it further on, but it's a good, good little helper there. Uh, so I, I, I brought my backpack with some of the things that I will bring for winter camping. So I thought we'll just uh, dig through that and I'll show you guys how I do it and uh, see if you can get any smarter from that. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, it is getting pretty warm in this jacket now, but it's okay. We're not moving, so I'll, I'll just stay like this. All right, so let's start from the outside of the pack. Like AI told us and that we already know, bring a lot of water. It could be good to put snow in this one. It will help to melt it a little bit. Um, so water and... Not just like this, because if it's really cold outside and you're out for uh, the entire day, this will freeze. So you want to bring a thermos as well. And then you want to boil water in the morning, so you always get a hot drink or meal, uh, depending on what time uh, or what you're doing in the day. It's always nice to just have that extra security for you, so you always can uh, get heated up if you need to do so. On top here, I have my shell jacket. This is what, I, is what I would be wearing throughout the day. I would not be wearing this when I'm moving because it will be super warm. As I mentioned, it's already warm just staying still. So bring a, a shell jacket and then outer layer that will protect you from the cold, if that makes sense. This is not how I pack usually, but this is just how it happens because I forgot it, obviously. Uh, this is a winter or three season sleeping bag. This would be good for now. It's uh, comfort for uh, or limit for men is minus eight degrees. Celsius, it will be down to uh, minus 26 if you're going for extreme. Uh, this is the Singy three season long. Obviously there is more, uh, there is warmer sleeping bags than this. You have the uh, Polar one, that's minus, I don't know, a lot. Then I have a thicker pair of um, shell trousers that are easy to put on and off. That will protect you from wind and snow. Uh, so these are the uh, Weitragen. Echo Shell trousers. I think they're great. I've been using them on uh, winter adventures pre before and they work just fine. And like we mentioned before, we're gonna consume a whole lot of more energy and uh, food and water. So bring that, a lot of it. This is just food. And then I would have energy. This would be nasty chocolates, energy drinks, sugar, and all that good stuff that we will be enjoying. Um, if it's really cold outside, gas is not always the uh, first thing you would like to use. This is uh, winter gas from Primus. I showed this in the previous video as well. Uh, big container. It's good to have a big container because you will consume more gas when it's colder outside. Uh, but again, if it's really, really cold outside, you might want to use uh, other types of fuel uh, that are not gas. I also brought a bigger stove for this occasion because we're probably going to end up melting snow if we're out for several days and we want to boil a lot of water, so I have a bigger stove in when I'm doing uh, winter camping. It's also nice to have bigger pots where you can just scoop the snow up like that and pretty much just uh, put it on the, on the stove there. Cloth, partly for uh, the stove uh, to clean everything out, but also wiping off the uh, tent from the inside. Condi uh, condensation will probably 
uh, be a factor anyway, no matter how open the tent is. We'll bring a uh, bigger hat uh, and put it on the right way, for those of you who have seen it. Uh, thicker hat, this is again for when I'm uh, standing still, even when sleeping, I'll put this on and protect my head. Because I don't want to sleep with my head inside of the sleeping bag, because that will just <clears throat> end up me breathing uh, wet air into the sleeping bag. And again, we don't want to get wet, we don't want to have condensation, so avoid that. Digging deeper into the backpack here, uh, sleeping pad, obviously a thick one, partly because it's comfortable, but also to keep warm. And then I would have this uh, sleeping pad as well, just to isolate even more from the cold uh, ground. And to finish that off, I would also have uh, this that I would put uh, as a footprint or around the footprint of the tent, uh, just to again, isolate myself from the snow or the icy ground. This is still the Hobby School Light 2. There is, uh, this is, I would say it's a three season tent. It would obviously work for now, but if it's extremely cold, you might want to uh, go um, slightly heavier, slightly more durable, uh, because usually it's obviously more windy when it's colder outside. So you might want to have a tent that's more adjusted for those kind of temperatures and, and conditions. And lastly at the bottom here, sleep kit. We've went through that a couple of times. Again, everything to stay warm, have a waterproof bag where you keep your sleeping gear in uh, so you can stay or get warm and toasty once you decide to sleep. Uh, I'm wearing long johns and I have a, a couple of base layers on on me right now. You might want to have a, a second um, pair of everything that you have on for your sleeping gear uh, so you can change into that when you go to sleep and just be absolutely completely certain that you will be warm and dry once you decide to, to go to sleep. Fire kit, this is obviously um, essential uh, all year round, I would say, but uh, even more now, because you might be even more depending on uh, fire to stay warm and, and, uh, and warm up and dry and melt snow, depending on uh, the sort of location that you're in. So the fire kit with multiple ways of making a fire, uh, lighter, fire steel, and all those type of things, and you make sure that everything works before you go out. So. Check your gear at home, not in the field. The toilet paper I would bring, I'm just gonna mention that fast. I've been through that. This is a uh, lantern uh, to use with, um, you just plug it into the gas canister there. It will work nice and it will um, shine a uh, comfortable uh, uh, light on the entire campsite. Uh, so obviously it will get dark uh, pretty quick. So you might wanna have extra lights with you. Headlamps, of course, or just General light or camping lanterns uh, could be a nice addition to have so you have light around the camp if there is no possibility to make a campfire. Another really essential piece of kit is the axe. You might want to bring a bigger axe for winter camping. I understand that. I completely agree. You want to use the back of the axe to hammer down the uh, tent pegs. You don't want to step on them because you risk bending them and then they will not be as functional. You might want to break ice uh, if you're going to uh, take some water, boil that. So the axe come in handy in many, many ways, except uh, besides just the obvious of cutting and chopping up wood. So you might want to again have a bigger one because you might want to consume a lot of firewood since it's colder and you're going to be doing uh, everything you can to stay warm. Another thing, this is the uh, ski mask so you might want to put this on when you decide to go to sleep uh, at night or when you're stopping for the day or just taking a break this is just to protect you if it's really windy uh, it's just make sure that your ears and uh, the rest of the head doesn't uh, are is not exposed to the elements uh, directly nordic pocket saw this uh, chainsaw hand powered chainsaw uh, again if you're cutting up bigger pieces of firewood it's a really nice kit same thing here, the uh, miscellaneous kit where I have, you know, toothbrush and, you know, things to take care of myself. Trash bag, always bring in the trash bag. First aid kit, part one and part two, I would bring this uh, with a space blanket, again, to be able to stay warm uh, in case in, of an emergency. Big uh, power bank again, and I also brought uh, the solar panel. That's pretty much my uh, two cents on this subject um, together with AI. I put some examples here of what I would bring. Let me know how you guys do it and um, and fire away in the comment section. That's uh, that's where the real party's at. So I'll see you there and uh, I hope you really enjoy 
this video and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.